Blessed and pleasant. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 10th of June. Mm -hmm. It is Friday, the 10th of June in 2022, and outside is overcast with strong winds, and even the horizon looked very gray this morning. But all in all, we continue to believe that even when you can't see it, the sun is still shining and it's going to be an awesome day. We're going to start things off this beautiful 10th of June morning with one entitled Awake My Soul and With the Sun. Let's have a listen.
man the power of that descant is real and a fitting way to get started today this beautiful friday the 10th of june i love the third verse of that hymn direct control suggests this day all i design or do or say that all my powers with all their might in thy soul glory may unite what powerful words we'll continue this morning with getting our words up on screen for today june the 10th for our morning prayer and let's see if i could make that happen in three two and one there we go <laughs> the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the father in spirit and truth for such the father seeks to worship him words from john chapter 4 verse 23 if you are following along in your cpwi books of common prayer we are on page 35 using versicle 1 blessed be the lord our god by whose grace we are yet alive blessed be his son jesus christ by whose rising we are set free blessed be the spirit of god in whom is our hope and our joy our invitatory prayer father we come together in the name of your son jesus christ our redeemer to offer you our worship praise and thanksgiving to you belong all power and glory you are the source of all goodness let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended lord Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his courts with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to pause briefly to call to mind those things that perhaps in thought, word, or deed, you may have committed this morning, this week. Things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God. Things that might have been unjust to our neighbors. Or things that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we make our confession saying, Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We move now to the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 69, verses 1, 2 to 23 and verse 31 through to 38. And leading us in the reading of the psalm this morning is Miss Nichelle Young. Let's have a listen. The Psalm Appointed, Psalm 69, 1 through 23, 31 through 38. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. 
I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely, for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you have fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byworth among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make song about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O oh God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will Proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it. And those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Miss Michelle very much for leading us in the reading of the Psalm, and Miss Young is reading in honor of the birthday of Miss Joy Stewart, which is 
tomorrow. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Up next, we have the reading of the Old Testament lesson for this morning. And the reading comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. And it is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, beginning at ver chapter 11, beginning at verse 9, reading through to chapter 12, verse 14. And leading us in the reading, in honor of the birthday of her friend, Miss Joy, is Miss Darlene Gentle. Let's have a listen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9, reading through to chapter 12, verse 14. Rejoice, young man, while you are young, and let your heart share you in the days of your youth. Follow the inclination of your heart and the desire of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Banish anxiety from your mind and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years draw near when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return with the rain in the day when the guards of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the women who grind cease working because they are few and those who look through the windows see dimly when the doors on the street are shut and the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of song are brought low, when one is afraid of heights and terrors are in the road. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails, because all must go to their eternal home, and the mourners will go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped and the golden bowl is broken. And the pitcher is broken at the fountain, and the wheel broken at the cistern. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the breath returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. All is vanity. Besides being wise, the teacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs. The teacher sought to find pleasing words, and he wrote words of truth plainly. The sayings of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings that are given by one shepherd. Of anything beyond these, my child, beware. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank both Miss Young and Miss Gentle for leading us in the reading in honor of the birthday of Miss Joy tomorrow. And Miss Joy, we wish you a happy birthday in advance. If you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, 
and I would have wanted to go directly to verse 14 of that reading and just call it a day, but that would be me taking shortcuts. Now, the reading from Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. is um, a beautiful one, and it is a continuation of the wisdom of the writer, yes, telling the people who would be listening, um, and more specifically so, the writing seemed to be geared towards the imparting of knowledge to one's offspring. It is believed that it is Solomon who wrote this book and that he was writing it for his sons who were supposed to take over the kingdom after him, of course. And we have heard Solomon's position on several things thus far. And Solomon, yes, his mind and his heart is fixed on the fact that to live for God is definitely, definitely the only wisdom that exists. But in all of that, Solomon makes clear the point, yes, that everything in this world is vanity because everything comes from God. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be in your mind, but still somewhat of a sad place to be. And how the reading from Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9 begins. Yes, we would have looked at the cause and effects and the limits of everything being where it's supposed to be and trusting in God's order and divine design. Yes, um, we looked at yesterday the limitations of knowledge and moving towards real wisdom, mm -hmm. which is the knowledge of Almighty God. We spoke yesterday about sowing seeds with more trust than an uncertainty in knowing that it is God who provides the growth in all things. And of course, we spoke of yesterday when we looked at Ecclesiastes 11, true to verse 8. We looked at the fact that no matter what comes, the sun gives light, but under the sun there'll be days of darkness and there will be days of plentiful, but everything is vanity because the days here do not last forever. And it's interesting because the reading then shifts into telling the reader you know what live your life as you can now and it seems to be a common theme coming from solomon and look at it rejoice young man while you are young let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth and it's interesting because he tells the reader Follow your inclinations of your heart and the desires of your eyes. But then he warns them. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So do what you want. Live how you want. Yes? But know that you will be answerable for whatever it is you do. And it's, it's interesting because you would think that someone who had a heart for God, a respect for God, a reverence for God like Solomon as the writer of Ecclesiastes would tell people, no, no, seek after the things of God because that is a sure and safe way for you to be. Yes, but that's not what Solomon says. Solomon says, no man, go out there, live your life, enjoy your days, follow the desires of your eyes, do what your heart desires. Just know that God will bring judgment against you for whatever it is you do. It's that simple. And I guess, <laughs> I guess it's because I'm not a parent. But pretty much that's my parenting style. No, man. Feel free to do what you want. Just know that there are always going to be consequences to your actions. And if you're aware of the fact that there's going to be consequences to your actions, maybe you'll be more careful as to what actions you engage in. But to try to stop you from doing what it is you want to do, as long as it is not harming somebody directly or harming yourself, please, free reign. Do what you want to do. Know that there are consequences. It's that simple. And it almost sounds as if though one would say you don't care for the well-being of the individual you're sending out. But it's not that I don't care. It is that each person needs to be mature enough to take responsibility for themselves and the decisions that they make. Now that is simple. And every time I discuss with persons, especially young people, how I was raised. I was raised to be a free thinker. 
I was raised to never be afraid to express myself as long as I do it with respect for those who I'm expressing myself to. I was raised to tell the truth and shame the devil. I was raised to follow my curiosity, but to remember to value my safety. I was raised in order to go after the things that I desire and do that which makes me happy, recognizing that there are consequences that come with every decision, good or bad. That is how I was raised. Now, I am neither perfect nor am I free from any judgment that will befall me. But I think because that was the understanding with which I was raised, there was no fear within me for going after what I think I wanted to accomplish. There was no doubt in me in recognizing you might fail, but you got to give it your best shot. There was no concern when making a decision, realizing, you know what? I will get licks when I finish doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway because that is what I want to do. That is how I was raised. And that is what Solomon is telling the reader they should do. Know that if you follow the inclination of your heart and you follow the desires of your eyes, you're probably going to be happy, but you're not going to be exempt from being answerable and responsible for the choices that you make. And I love verse 10. Verse 10 says, banish anxiety from your mind, put away pain from your body. For youth and the dawn of life are vanities. It's fleeting. Solomon is saying, all of this that you enjoy now in your youthful days, one day will be but a memory. And let me tell you something. I have decided that if in my advanced years, because we ain't gonna call this thing old at all, if in my advanced years, I get to only sit with my walking stick and my two dogs and no cat, we don't want cat, but nothing against cat, I just don't want cat. If I'm confined to my porch because I can't move because the neck, the back, the knee and everywhere in between hurt, I want that in the midst of my pain, my memories will be ones that are fulfilling, that when I sit back and I smile my toothless smile, <laughs> that there will be joy and peace in my heart and my mind that I would have lived my life well. That's it. Man is given, as Solomon reminds us, a finite number of days. There's a number we start with and there's a number we end with. What we do with the space between those two numbers. That is what counts. That is what we have to value. How we live out the number of our days between the beginning and between the end. That is what is important. It is highly important that we are born. It will be very important when we die. It is the space in between that beginning and end date that we have to make count. There is where we have to make the memories. There is where we have to make the impact. There is where we have to make the difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of those we come in contact with. That's it. And let me tell you, let me tell you, I plan to make every single day count. I have a, I love you. I have a bunch of um, uh, congregation members who are concerned about the fact that I'm always going, going, going 100 miles an hour. And they would say to me, Rev, when you are rest, and I chuckle and I tell them, there's a day when they will put on a stone, rest in peace. I don't want that. I want them to put on the stone, resting in peace. And I want them to add the words, finally. <laughs> you see, when my time is up, I will not be able to do for the glory of God. Which means that now, while I am living, while I am moving, and while I have energy, I need to keep going for the glory of his kingdom. Because when I can't move, I won't be able to do it. And I want that when I can't move, I will be satisfied that I have done as much as I could have done. And that's what Solomon is telling them. Live your life now. 
Just remember their consequences. And it's interesting because he tells them, remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years draw near when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. One of my sweetest moments as a priest is home visits to the elderly. Yes, and I got upset at COVID because I couldn't visit my elders the way I wanted. Yes, home visits to the elderly who when I talk with them, even before I could give them communion, remind me and themselves of what their life used to be before. And when I listen to them sing off the words of the hymns, even though their eyes can't read it from the book or recite the prayers with such gusto, because they believe the words that they are saying, they're not just reading it from a page. It tells me that in their days of youth, they remembered the creator. They worked to build a relationship with him. That now that their days of youth have passed them by and they are sitting there in pain, wondering when. And not having much pleasure, perhaps, in the pain they're experiencing. They know that in their youth, they had done their best. They had lived as best as they could. That's the life I want. It inspires me. It blesses me when I make these visits. Yes? To see the joy in them still. And it's interesting because Solomon describes the hardships of life. The doors on the streets would be shut. The sound of grinding will be low. The, the, I mean, the young maidens and the daughters will no longer be singing because their hearts will be heavy within them. Yes? But it's all vanity. Solomon says, it's all vanity. Because all of this, the dust will return to the earth as it was before. And the breath that God gave will return to him. And that is the end for us all, is it not? It is. But the joy of the end, yes, is heightened by the joy of the journey to arrive at that destination. I imagine it like this. That when I die, there's going to be a video show where God and I and whatever spectators are there will have to look through the story of my life. And I want that when we are looking through the story of my life, there is far more laughter clapping and merrymaking than, ooh, you really did that. And there will be some of those because, yeah, I really did that. And I probably should not have. But I want it to be an experience and I want that when you remember me that you remember me with fondness that you remember me for the good that I would have done in this world and Solomon is telling the readers be wise seek after the Lord because that is true wisdom that is true knowledge that is where your heart is supposed to be and it's interesting because I love how he ends it. He says, of book wisdom, of making books, there is no end. Of studying, there is no end. You could learn the things of the world and there will always be something new to learn. But true wisdom and true knowledge comes from an awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ. And he didn't say Jesus Christ, of course. He says God. Hmm? And in the end, how he ends with verse 13 and 14. The end of the matter is this. All has been heard. Fear God, keep his commandments. For that is the whole duty of everyone. And I love that he uses the word duty. You see, you were created to praise God. You were made and placed upon this earth to make a difference for God's kingdom. That we walk away by following the world from the role that God has given us to play. Yes? Is our fault. It's not God's. We are called to fear God, to keep his commandments, and to strive to live for him. That's the duty of everyone. And at the end of it all, God will bring every deed into judgment. And I like this piece. 
including every secret thing. Because you see, I could in front of you be one thing, but behind you be something else. But while I could hide from man, I can't hide from God or my conscience. Even the things I do in secret, the Lord sees it, whether good or evil. And even those things that you know not of will be judged. So what should I do with my time? I should seek to live a life that is fulfilling and pleasing to Almighty God. That's it. That's it. And some might say, easier said than done. But at the end of the day, if I give it my best effort, I am sure I will get points for trying. <laughs> That's my philosophy. Flawed as it may be, it's one that Solomon has passed on to us. Live your best life for the glory of the kingdom of God. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Let us continue then with the profession of our faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us be bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first call it for this morning is the collet for the day of Pentecost. Let us pray. O God, who on the day of Pentecost taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn our prayers to prayers of thanksgiving and personal intercessions.
This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. We would like to pay a happy belated birthday to Miss Jasmine Richardson. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Elise Nielsen, Miss Kim Welch Taylor, Miss Kesian Cadle, and Miss Gertrude Stevens. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow is Mr. Mark Logue, Miss Rachel Price, Miss Tennille Williams, Mr. Calvin Osman, and Miss Joy Stewart. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings be upon you for all the days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline. Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verilyn, and Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Louise. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Reverend Ilona, Miss Fiona, and Miss Catherine. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Laverne, Miss Carolyn, and Miss Shelmadine. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Joyce, Miss Sheila, and Miss Gretel. We remember and pray for Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delverine, Miss Daphne, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Kim, Miss Dominique, and Miss Pat. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Derla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Cecilia, Miss Gladys, Miss Ismay, Miss Elva, and Miss Doreen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Jeffrey. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jervis, and Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Basso. We remember and pray for Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Ian, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, and Mr. Tony. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the family of Miss Audrey Coleman, the family of Mr. Tony Humes, the family of Miss Lanisha Jones, the family of Mr. Carl Leacock, the family of Miss Norma Welcome, the family of Miss Doreen Belisle, the family of Miss Consuelo Escalante, the family of Mr. Miss Daphne Kemp, the family of Reverend Father Hardy Garden, the family of Mr. Graham Sampson. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We especially remember our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Ashley, Brittany, Ria, Kai, Elton, and Arian. For our loved ones in the military, we pray for Jason, Emil, Prince, Jade, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Kishan, and Alvin. We continue to remember and pray for the protection and enablement 
of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We continue to remember and pray especially for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Eck, Lawrence, Joseph, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We remember all personnel that work in our medical system, those in the administrative offices and administrative position, those from the statistical office, those from the BCVI section, the cooks, the Adleys, those in the COVID testing areas, the cleaners, the pharmacists, the lab technicians, the radiologists, all who offer up themselves both in public and private medical institutions. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We pray for all persons in the various forms of isolation. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine, and we indeed continue to pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons whose salaries would have been reduced, persons who would have lost employment, all who are struggling to make ends meet. We continue to remember the most vulnerable in our society, praying for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, churches, the private sector, the opposition, all persons in positions of public trust and authority, all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue in our prayers to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic, those affected by the ravages of natural disasters, those affected by war. And this morning, I ask your prayers for the nation of Nigeria, where for the past weeks, there's been a push by the government-supported Muslim movement in the persecution of Christians, where persons are being killed, churches are being burned. We pray for the re-registration of voters, that Christian individuals will be registered to vote in order that their voices could make an impact upon the society. Indeed, we pray for God's protection over all persons who are persecuted for their religious faith or belief or lifestyle. We continue to remember and pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters, especially for us during the season of hurricanes. We remember and pray as well for all persons who are in the various stages of recovery following a natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God and in your presence as well. It's a beautiful Friday morning and I forgot to mention one group of persons I would like us to pray for. This morning, representing the diocese, leaving from the diocese, is a group of five persons, I believe it is, travel pardon me, traveling to the Diocese of Ohio. These young persons are going to be traveling to Ohio to be a part of a youth summer camp. They are going to be trained as youth summer camp leaders and will be working for the duration of the summer in a place called Bell Weather Farms, which is a campsite in the Diocese of Ohio. Now, we have taken several exchange trips of youth to work in summer camps there but this is our first time at bellwether farms and um we are hoping 
that God will grant safety of travel to our young people for their departure and for their return, and that he will use this experience that they will have to draw them closer to him and to empower them to come back to work for the youth ministry here in our own diocese. So we pray for Ms. Keisha Leng, our youth coordinator, and those who are traveling, um, and for the families who are entrusting them to our care and to God's almighty care as they go on this new experience as well. I want to remind you, well, before I remind you of our broadcast schedule, I want to thank those of you who joined us for Bible study last evening. It was an excellent discussion on the day of Pentecost and the power and importance of the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit in the life of us, uh, in our lives as Christian believers and proclaimers of the gospel. If you missed out on Thursday, do know that every Thursday at 7.30 via Zoom, the link is normally shared. You can join us for Bible studies. I like Bible study because I get to hear from you. It is one thing to preach and not be able to get your response, but then it's another beautiful thing to be able to have a discussion that together we can enlighten each other with our shared knowledge. So yeah, next Thursday at 7.30, again, we will have Bible study. For today, following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, and we close off the day with Compline at 9 p.m. I want to thank you all so much for joining us for this morning's morning prayer and invite you to join us for any of these remaining services as you are able. I am very thankful for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning. Ms. Jerry, we say a special prayer for you this morning that whatever bad feelings you might be having, whatever headaches you might be having, that this passes quickly and that God grants you healing and comfort this day. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to wrap up this one this morning with one of my favorites. I, I get vexed with me if you want. I love this song. Joyful, joyful. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and Ode to Joy. The truth is, live this life. Be joyful in the things that you can enjoy and accomplish for the glory of the kingdom of God. And then, hopefully, at the end of our time, joyfully, we will be able to enter into his kingdom. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day and a blessed and beautiful weekend. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. To those persons who are graduating this weekend, we want to say congratulations to all of you. I look forward to seeing you all on Monday morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.